Hey, my name is Chanel Friesen. I'm the Public Information Officer for the Unified Government Public Health Department. And I'm here today uh, with Dr. Alan Greiner, our Chief Medical Officer, and Dr. Aaron Cor Corvo, our Deputy Medical Officer. And we're going to give you an update on our investigation of COVID-19 in Wyandotte County, particularly what has happened since we've had our first case and unfortunately the first death that we had for Wyandotte County and what that has looked like. So um, let's get started. Can you give us some background on the first case that we saw in Wyandotte? Yes, thank you, Janelle. Uh, the first case we had in, in Wyandotte County was actually diagnosed on March 12th. So we've just now reached the time frame where a number of individuals who came into contact with that case have come out of quarantine today after their 14-day quarantine. So that's some really good news. Um, it, it was a very tragic case because our first case in Wyandotte was also our first fatality. Um, the individual was an adult male in his 70s that resided at a long-term care facility here in the county. He was, um, he began experiencing heart problems and was transported to, to Providence Medical Center. Unfortunately, because of the heart problems, no one was really suspecting COVID-19 as, as a problem for him. And, and so the protections that we're now taking routinely across the community really weren't happening uh, two weeks ago. And so unfortunately, a large number of individuals did um, have some exposure in, in close quarters with that patient. Um, the good news is that all of the patients at the, at the long-term care facility and the staff at that facility were tested and, and came back with negative COVID-19 tests. The Kansas Department of Health and Environment worked closely with our team to, to assist with that. There were 85 uh, total patients and staff that were tested and came back negative. And then there were another 30 healthcare providers at Providence Medical Center um, that were quarantined and were monitoring their symptoms for the last 14 days. And uh, none of them developed symptoms or, or needed to be tested. So they're now, now all out of quarantine. There were five uh, members of our local emergency management services that uh, had contact. In fact, two of them developed some symptoms, but both of them came back with negative tests as well. Our investigative disease investigation team here at the Unified Government has been working diligently to try to determine where this patient could have contracted COVID-19. And to date, we are, we are not able to link that case to another case. So we're still uncertain, but we continue to try to make connections to the large number of individuals that that individual came into contact with in the days prior to his demise. Uh, we will keep updating the public with any additional information we receive as we continue to do that, that work contacting all of, all of his contacts. Thank you. Now to jump uh, back for a second, for people who aren't familiar with contact investigations or contact tracing, can you talk a little bit about what that means and what that process looks like? Sure. A lot of that is just intensive interview work, and, and a lot of it can be done on the phone. We have trained disease investigators here at the Unified Government and an epidemiologist that is supervising the, the overall program. And essentially what we do is we try to find out everyone that an individual has come into close contact with, and that generally means contact where They've been in the same physical space in a, in a room or in a home, and especially if they've had contact where they were less than six feet apart for some period of minutes, then we, we will find out where that happened and try to alert anybody else that would have been in that same situation and make phone calls to them as well. So we're essentially reaching out to all those individuals, interviewing them about where and when they may have come in contact with the case, and then giving them guidance on what they need to do to quarantine themselves, as well as what they need to do to monitor themselves for symptoms. Thank you. So in this case, when you were talking about things like testing and quarantine that, that had happened, those were folks who were in close contact, had been in, within six feet of the man who passed away, 
whether it was at the skilled nursing facility where he lived or at the hospital or close you know family members is that is that correct that's right there were some the residents and staff at the long-term care facility that may not have had the kind of close contact that we're talking about where they were within six feet of that individual for some minutes but because it, it is a long-term care facility there are many vulnerable patients there and so the Kansas Department of Health and Environment made the decision to go ahead and test everyone to try to make sure we didn't have a serious problem with with a bunch of folks who have other chronic illnesses so what else are our public health disease investigators doing to track COVID-19 in Wyandotte County thanks Janelle I'll take that one um, so we're working very hard as soon as we find any positive cases in the community um, our disease investigators as Dr. Greiner had mentioned um, and our uh, head epidemiologist um, takes that information in and again we're contacting um, those uh, those um, citizens we're talking to them about um, instructions on how to isolate themselves for others and also reaching out to their contacts and talking to them very strongly about how to quarantine and be safe. Um, quarantine is for individuals who have not uh, yet developed any symptoms but may have come in contact with that person who has the positive test. The other thing is, is that because we haven't had as many tests um, within our community as we would like, and, and we do hope to get more, we're asking that people report their symptoms online at our health department website. This is a very important um, process that everyone in the community can can do to help us track the spread of COVID-19. Uh, and, and when you go on our website and report your symptoms, it's very helpful for us. Someone from the health department is also looking at those. Uh, and we will be calling uh, those people back uh, as well. Some people um, do have symptoms of COVID-19 who have not received testing yet, and if that's the case, um, we will talk to them also about how to isolate themselves uh, from, from people around them and then instructions for their family members as well. We do have to, uh, ha hope to have additional testing um, up and running in our community um, by early next week, and we'll be notifying you all uh, uh, when that becomes available. Thank you. So what can people do to help reduce the impact of COVID-19 on our community? So we're really emphasizing our stay at home order. So staying at home right now is very important. People, especially people who are not engaged in what we call essential businesses or essential activities should protect themselves and their families as well as the community by staying at home as much as possible and limiting your contact outside of the home as much as you can. So if you do have to go to the grocery store or to another essential business like your bank or a healthcare provider, we encourage people to maintain that, that spatial isolation and, and stay six feet away from other people you don't know. Be extremely careful with what you're doing and wash your hands frequently. Don't touch your eyes, mouth, or nose. And then re remember, if you become sick or have symptoms, don't go out into the community yourself, but, but call your health care provider as well as reporting your symptoms on, on our self-reporting website, as, as Dr. Corbeau mentioned. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I also want to mention that the health department understands that this is putting um, in extreme stressors on some families in our community. Um, if if uh, anyone uh, has needs um, for food, uh, uh, we do have a, a space on our website there where you can indicate your need, uh, especially those families who are affected um, by symptoms of the coronavirus or, or have a, a um, positive case. Um, we, we again don't want uh, those people to have to go out and shop and whatnot. So please go to our website and indicate your needs um, and someone will reach out to you. Um, we uh, are working in concert with um, Crosslines and, and other organizations within our community to help uh, get food delivery out to you. Also, um, we've had many people reach out to our office and, and ask to uh, to volunteer or to donate, and we appreciate um, the outpouring of support from, from the community. We also have a space on our website where you can indicate uh, that you'd like to volunteer with us, so, so if you'd like to, please go online and let us know. 
There's another resource that we'll mention as well. We, of course, have lots of resources on our website, but if you do not have a computer or internet access, there is a local phone information program being delivered by Southwest Boulevard Family Healthcare in concert with Heart to Heart International. That information line is 913-396-7070. 913-396-7070. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today to give us these updates. It's great to hear more about how much investigation has been going on since the first case that we've seen and with the other cases that have happened in Wyandotte County, as well as the various resources that are available for people to stay up to date and to get the resources they need during this difficult time. So um, if people want to find out more, they can go to our website, which is wycokck.org slash COVID-19, and you can also call 311. Thank you.